So the U.S. gestation stall debate. So what we'll be discussing, we'll talk about the background summary for U.S. pork production and the underlying economics of this article, and then as well as the implications to agriculture. So this article talks about the U.S. gestation stall debate and about how it is one of the most popular de debates happening in today's marketplace. The main concern about this topic is the welfare of animals in commercial production systems. Gestation stalls are metal stalls that house female breeding stock in individually confined areas during an animal's four-month pregnancy. This leads to many different aspects of the U.S. swine industry, but the main ones talked about in this report being changes in swine production, the legal framework associated with this, farm level costs of trans transitioning from gestation stalls to group housing, changes in the marketplace, and state of change votes versus by difference. Changes in swine production. Changes in swine production over the last several decades has remained re relatively constant. The big changes coming in the form of animal production practices. Swine producers have had to change size, organizational structure, and techno and technolo technology of production. All of these changes, as well as the combination of more specified feeding practices, has helped to increase the number of pigs per breeding animal to 20.22, which is up from 10.33 recorded in 1963. This has forced producers to become efficient and productive with their operations. In the U.S., there are two main laws that monitor the legal framework of this sector. The 28-hour rule, which requires that while animals are in the process of interstate transport, they must not be confined for more than 28 hours without unloading for feeding, water, and rest. And then there's the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, which requires the proper treatment and humane handling of all food animals in the USDA inspected slaughter plants. These two main laws enforce humane handling of all food animals and help to enforce the legal framework of this industry. So next is the cost level of switching from a gestation stall to group housing. The cost level of switching from gestation stalls to group housing is a common adjustment that is being made in the industry. This switch brings a large amount of capital cost from installation of systems as well as a learning curve for producers. So in saying this, the cost levels right off the bat from switching from the gestation stalls to the newer group housing systems for infrastructure and everything are quite high. One of the main problems that farmers worry about with this switch is their production performance that is put in jeopardy after, after this production change. With consumers being increasingly sensitive to the food production process, this brings some changes in the marketplace. Companies that are choosing producers who are not using gestation stalls are showing that strong market forces are leading to the discontinuation of gestation stall use in the United States. Other changes such as the Food Marketing Institute and the National Council of Chain Restaurants supporting enhanced pork industry guidelines bring up the argument that if consumers are demanding this gestation free pork, will producers be compensated by higher pork prices? It is still important to note that gestation stalls continue to be voluntarily used on roughly three-fourths of the industry. This suggests that the actual willingness to pay for stall-free pork is actually less than what is summed across all pork products than what is needed to cover adjustment costs. If this issue to consumers is the height of what it is said to be, there would be more of a voluntary action in consumption towards stall-free pork. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about the underlying economics of the article. Um, so when it comes to political factors, um, transparency in food production has become uh, a huge part of what consumers are paying attention to. Um, so when it comes to that, they're looking for changes in nutrition, health, genetics, and technology. And in that makes pork producers more productive with their livestock. So recently the issues of gestation stalls have come to question of animal welfare and the economics of producers, basically in saying that producers are only um, caring about the economics and the productivity of their pigs rather than the animal welfare aspects and um, animal rights.
people believe that these gestation stalls are um, the economics is overpowering what the welfare should be. Um, so some states have already passed laws uh, due to pressure from animal, animal welfare groups and now are required to remove them and with that change it to an alternative method of housing which is um, group housing is being the most commonly used one. So as you can see um, Oregon and Colorado Maine, Michigan, and Ohio, and Rhode Island have now made it legislation. Um, California, Arizona, and Florida, they are all ballot and tentative, which means that it's the legislation is, is getting voted on. It's not exactly sure whether it can be. And uh, you can see is the rank in U.S., um, the ones that are in legislation are some of the top producers, which uh, has had a huge effect on pork production. So... The public is now suggesting that producers switch to group housing for pregnant sows instead of the gestation stalls. Um, producers with an existing barn will have to remove the gestation stalls and, uh, and renovate their facilities if the legislation is passed at their own cost. So when the legislation comes through, they are going to have to um, remove these stalls um, at their own cost and by a certain date. So this will cause producers to become less productive as group housing requires more management. And also they're going to be, become at a, like a, a stalemate for productivity because they are going to have to trans over, uh, transition into these group housing stalls when their barns are set up for um, farrowing crates. So um, gestation stalls prevents um, pigs or other pigs from stepping on piglets. So producers will probably see a slightly higher mortality rate with with born piglets and um, with the group housing piglets born will be require will probably require more labor to assist with um, nursing and weaning um, simply because um, each every, each individual pig has to ha have their own piglets and each piglet has to nurse to to live um, so when it comes to supply and demand changes um, they're going to be major changes once the U.S. law passes. So markets can be expected a large delay in halt in pork production um, while the the whole market is transitioning, because um, the U.S. holds quite a quite a large chunk of uh, pork production in the world. So the, um, delaying them and halting that production is going to have a huge effect. So the demand for pork. It may increase because the supply would be decreasing, um, but with the substitutes for meat, U.S. consumers will probably just change to another meat source. So that price could be increasing or decreasing. It's it's unsure, but if people are still demand for pork um, and the supply is decreased, they they're gonna they're gonna have to pay a higher cost during the transition periods, and that figure is shown on the left side there. Um, so for the higher demand for pork raised in group housing rather than just Asian stalls would cause the price to increase and the supply to close the gap. So once the um, transitions have been made to the group housing, uh, the demand is still going to be there for pork and the supply is going to start to close the gap. And uh, as you can see, that's on the left side. Um, the supply is going to increase and... Uh, that should be about that. Um, when it comes to price changes, uh, consumers definitely will be feeling the brunt of the changes um, as they can expect to see higher prices for pork products in the grocery stores. Um, recent studies have shown that consumers are willing to pay more for pork raised in group housing um, and in return producers will be compensated with higher prices but again that's still up in question um, whether like not all, every single consumer is going to be able to pay those higher prices, so um, that's only speaking for a majority of the population. And also producers, it's uncertain whether that they can um, receive those higher prices based on world prices. Um, so direct costs that come with the refining um, of group housing processes will be shown through the supply of pork that is produced and um, the shortage when the changes are being made. Implications for agriculture. 
So these implications for agriculture that a switch away from gestation-free pork would have on the market could be very substantial. Pork producer organizations suggest that the use of gestation stalls may facilitate more efficient pork production, resulting in lower prices for consumers. So in saying this, the gestation stalls help the farmers to really be efficient and uh, keep their costs low when growing and producing these pigs, whereas switching from group housing would be a lot more labor intensive, as well as the initial higher capital costs that facilitate with this switch. Um, the use of gestation stalls is deemed as animal welfare issue by some because the stalls, the limit, the stalls limit the animal's mobility, while producers state that the stalls provide the animals with proper nutrients and protection that the pregnant sow needs. Uh, the producers claim that these stalls produce, or sorry, help the animal to provide the piglets with protection to keep other pigs from stepping on the newly born piglets, as well as you can have um, proper nutrient plans for each pig compared to the, the nutrients that they need. Gestation stalls help to account for a severe increase in pork production from not only increases in total production, but also in the average pigs for breeding animal, which as stated earlier is up from 10.32 to 20.22. With the help of gestation stalls, the sow can produce a maximum of 2.5 litters per year, with each litter taking place over a 145 day cycle. If the market were to force producers away from the gestation stalls, this total litters per year would decrease due to production factors being slowed and by factors that the non-gestation stall practices cannot accomplish or produce. This effect would have a severe implication on not only producers and their bottom dollar, but also on the global pork production. Producers are forced to be as efficient as possible to help meet their annual amount of pork required globally. And if the market and consumers were to force producers away from the gestation stall use, to use the closest viable option for high level production would be the group housing option. Group housing is a system where the pigs can move freely in a barn with several other animals. The negative side effects can be towards the animals and as the production standpoint. The production standpoint, the major factors being increased use of skilled farm laborers, uh, the capital required to switch over from these specialized facilities, and the slowed production possibilities that associate with the group housing practice. The animals can still receive the desired nutrients but are more vulnerable in terms of the surrounding animals during and after the birth of the piglets. Um, so now to conclude. Um, so to conclude our presentation, uh, the topic of gestation stalls is um, the debate still going and is going to continue to be very heated as, uh, as any other animal welfare issue in, in the market and uh, it's going to be a large issue for the pork industry to get over. Um, so any outcome of this topic will have uh, severe implications for agriculture and uh, the industry is going to require, be required to adapt and change to uh, the desired direction. So whether that's the group housing option, that's going to be major um, infrastructure changes, and if it's not, then it's going to have to be very different changes, probably with um, transparency to how um, pork is produced. So prices for both producers and consumers will be expected to change as a result of the new laws being passed, and once it becomes legislation, um, not just consumers probably will be paying higher prices for pork as they seem to show that they have a willingness to pay. Um, but can only speak for majority of the population, like discussed. And extra costs that come with production of group housing um, can probably be expected to be passed through consumers because once these stalls and um, are going to come out and the group housing is going to come in, that's going to be a large fixed cost for the farmer and they're going to have to pay it off probably by per head per animal as they're going to um, try and budget that as for cash flow. So if they can sell their pigs for slightly higher that will help um, pay off the transition they just made and these are our references thank you for listening